Hey y'all, have you ever needed to duplicate objects around your scene or wanted to create an object that can adjust its components on the fly? If so, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to duplicate better using the array modifier. Plus, I'll show you how to create this cool height adjusting spiral staircase as we go. So let's get into it. Now the array modifier creates an array of duplicates of the object in your scene. So let's go to the modifier tab and add in an array modifier to our cube. Now you can see there are some default options set, and we're going to talk about all of those options in this video. But for now, just know that like any modifier, you can stack array modifiers to create arrays of arrays and create some pretty cool things. Like for example, this 3D cube that I made by stacking three array modifiers and then adjusting the relative offset on the X, Y, and Z axis of each modifier in the stack. So if you're making tileable assets, the array modifier can be your best friend. But that's enough about stacking the modifiers, let's get into the actual settings. Let's get started with the fit types. Now the default is fixed count, which generates a number of copies based on the count, meaning that if we set the count to four, we'll have four copies in our scene, the original plus three duplicates. Then we have fit length, which generates enough copies to fit within a fixed length given by the length field. So if we set the length to 10 meters, it will create an array of five objects in order to fill that length. You may need to keep in mind though that this does take the offset values into account when determining the number of copies to make. Meaning that if I try to fill an area of 2.2 meters and my relative offset is set to 1.2, at least with this cube, I'll only have one duplicate. But if I set that length to 2.4 meters, I'll get another copy because now there's enough space for the array modifier to add one in. And finally, we have the fit curve method, which generates enough copies to fit within a connected curve object. But we'll come back to that one a little later when we're working on the spiral staircase. So now that we've talked about these types, let's look at the offset values. There are three offset types that can be enabled and combined to get exactly what you're looking for out of your array. The relative offset is the default and it offsets your array of duplicates by the dimensions of the object itself multiplied by the factor on either the x, y, and or z axes. So if we drop the x factor on this cube back down to 1, you can see that the duplicates are right up next to each other. However, if we tab into edit mode, select a face, inset, and extend it, you can see that the other cubes now adjust to fit the new relative offset for this object. Now as I said earlier, you can combine all three offsets as needed. So when we enable constant offset, the array shifts to show both the relative offset and the constant offset. Constant offset just adds a constant distance to the offset calculation for the offset. So right now, the relative offset is set to one, but because constant offset is also set to one meter on the x-axis, each duplicate is placed at the relative offset plus one meter. The final offset is object offset, which allows you to apply a transformation from a separate object to the array. It is highly recommended that you use empty objects to control this offset, but it is not required. To see this offset in action, let's add in an empty plane axis object with Shift A. Once you've added it, select the cube and return to the modifiers tab. Then enable the object offset and select that new empty object from the dropdown. Since there's no transformation acting on the empty object, nothing changes immediately. But if you select that empty object again and rotate it on the z-axis, you can see the array start to take on the angle of rotation with its duplicates. Now since the empty object and the cube are in the same location, let's switch to wireframe mode to work with them a little easier. And since you've seen the effect, let's start getting the cube prepared for the staircase. Go ahead and set your relative offset factor to be 1 on the z-axis and scale the cube down on the z-axis then tab into edit mode and move the mesh to the right so that the left side of the cube is even with the point of origin, that orange dot in the center of the object. Now that we've adjusted the cube, you may be thinking, what's going on with the arrayed objects? Well, this scaling issue is a relatively common issue when you start using the array modifier. And the reason it's doing this is because the object scaling on the cube is not set to 1 on the x, y, and z axes. You can resolve this issue by selecting the cube and hitting Control A and applying the scale. But you can prevent this from ever occurring in the first place by doing all of your scaling in edit mode instead of object mode. So let's clear the rotation on the empty object by selecting it and hitting Alt R and finish scaling the cube to be the right shape for our stairs. 
Once you're happy with your shape, remember to hit Control A and apply the scaling to fix the array modifier. Before we continue with our stairs though, let's pause for a moment and discuss the merge options. The merge settings are pretty straightforward. When you enable merge, the vertices in a duplicate will be merged with the vertices in the next duplicate that are within the given distance. So let's see how this works. Make sure merge is disabled and then apply the modifier by going to the top of the modifier, clicking the dropdown and applying. Then tab it to edit mode on the cube and select the topmost face. If you hit Control L, you'll select all of the linked faces for that face. Then hit G and Z and move it up on the Z axis and you'll see that the duplicate has been applied and is not connected to any of the other duplicates. Now let's undo that until we get the array modifier back, then enable merge and apply the modifier again. This time, since there are vertices within the merge distance, if we select the topmost face and hit Control L, the entire mesh will be selected. Unfortunately, if you turn on X-Ray, you can see that even though all of the duplicates were merged, Blender did not remove the faces on the inside of the mesh. So you'd need to clean those up before doing anything else with this. But one more time, let's undo that and check out that final merge setting. The final merge setting is to merge the first and the last copies together so that you don't end up with duplicates over top of one another. This option will merge the first and last copies together if they happen to overlap within the merge distance. This is usually done with circular objects, but you can see that once I rotate and apply the modifier, the first copy is merged with the last copy. So even though I had four duplicates set on the modifier, I only have three instances of the mesh once it's applied. So now that we've covered merge, let's go back and talk about fit curve. The fit curve type is the most versatile type, and it provides you the most control over your array as it generates enough duplicates to fit within the length of the curve. So go ahead and clear any rotation on the empty object with Alt-R, and then add a 0.1 meter constant offset on the Z-axis for the cube. Now we're ready to add the curve. So hit Shift-A, select Curve, and then choose Path. Then select the Added Path object, tab into Edit Mode, and hit GX2 to move every node on your path 2 meters on the X-axis. Once that's done, select and dissolve all but the first and last nodes on your path, since you'll only need two nodes for this example. Once that's done, tab back to object mode and rotate negative 90 degrees on the y-axis so that the path object is pointing straight up. Then go back to the cube's array modifier and select the curve from the dropdown. Immediately, the array should have more duplicates to fill the length of your path object. Now you can control the number of duplicates by simply adjusting that top node on the path up or down in edit mode. So to add the spiral, just rotate the empty object on the z-axis until you're happy with the twist. I used 30 degrees. The last part we need for the staircase is to add a pole going up the center. So let's add in a cylinder. After adding in the cylinder, go to the operator panel in the bottom left corner and adjust the radius to 0.1 meters. Then tab into edit mode and move the mesh up 1 meter on the z-axis so the bottom face is located on the point of origin. Then add an array modifier to the cylinder and change the type to fit curve. Select the path again and then adjust the relative offset to be 1 on the z-axis instead of 1 on the x-axis. Then apply all scaling on the cylinder. If you did all of that correctly, the pole and the stairs should now follow the length of the path. But since we still have the UVs and caps to discuss, let me switch over to another file and talk about those. So, this is a sneak peek of a future video test object inspired by Castlevania's Morning Star. And as you can see, the chain is fully arrayed out. But at the end of the chain, we have the Morning Star tip. That tip is added because on the array modifier, I've set the in cap value to be that star object. So, a copy of the star object is added to the very end of the array of chains. If I wanted a star at the beginning, I could set the start cap to be a star as well, and a star would be added to the beginning of the chain. The final option to discuss is the UVs, which will allow you to offset the UVs of the object so that it isn't obvious that they are duplicates. Now you can play around with these and set the offset, or you can just leave them. It doesn't really matter. It's all up to you. That's everything you need to know about the array modifier. If you ever find yourself in a position where you need duplicate objects, don't just duplicate them. Try using the array modifier to dynamically adjust the amount and position for your scene. 
If you like this content, please subscribe and leave a like as it really helps feed that YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions or feedback, you can leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I'll see you guys in the next one.